Welcome to Intro to Logic. This is one of two videos on the topic of conditional proofs. Be sure to continue with part two at the end of this video. Simply put, conditional proofs allow us to derive a conditional within our proof. So let's look at a really basic example to understand how conditional proofs work. Consider the argument, if p then q, therefore not q then not p. Like any old argument, we draw a scope line and write our assumptions, which in this case is just if p then q, and you write the conclusion that we're trying to derive at the bottom, which is if not q then not p. Now according to conditional proof, we can derive a conditional within a proof by three simple steps. First, you're going to assume the antecedent of the conditional that you're trying to prove. And notice that I've drawn another scope line here. The idea of the scope line is that it kind of allows us to section off this subproof within the larger proof. So we're going to draw a right not q as our second assumption, and we'll write a for cp, which just stands for assumption for conditional proof. And then at the bottom of this second scope line, we're going to write the consequent of the conditional that we're trying to prove, which in this case is not p. Okay, so now that we have our antecedent at the top and our consequent at the bottom, we are going to ask ourselves how can we derive not p given these two assumptions? And it turns out that this is pretty easy. We can just use modus tollens, right? So we have a conditional and the negation of the consequent which in this case is the negation of q, not q, and so we can derive not p by modus tollens, 1, 2, m, t. So according to conditional proof, once we've assumed our antecedent and derived our consequent, we can do what we call discharge the conditional, and this just entails ending our second scope line and writing the antecedent that we assumed and the consequent that we derived into conditional form. So we have if not q, then not p. And you'd write lines 2 through 3 because those are the lines that we use to derive this conditional. And then you just write cp for conditional proof. And here we have our first conditional proof. So to summarize, let's go over the three steps we use when doing a conditional proof. To begin with, we write the antecedent of the consequent that we're trying to prove. So write the antecedent. And you're going to write the antecedent at the top of a scope line that you draw to kind of section off the subproof that you're doing within the larger proof. And the second thing we're going to do is write the consequent at the bottom of the scope line. So write the consequent. And this not only is useful for sectioning off the subproof, but it also gives us direction so that we know what our next step is in the proof, that we're trying to derive the consequent. So after we've done this, we are then going to discharge the whole conditional. And what this involves is taking the antecedent that we assumed and the consequent that we derived and writing it into conditional form. And so we'll label the lines that we use to derive the conditional and then just write CP for conditional proof. And some people talk about this um, by using absorbing language. They say that the conditional or the antecedent and the consequent are in absorbed into the our new conditional that we've just derived. So that's another way to talk about it. Okay, so let's look at some more examples. Here's another good example. Let's do this one together and practice our use of conditional proofs. So notice that we have um, a sequence here, and we have our assumptions on the left-hand side and our conclusion on the right-hand side. And so we're going to draw a scope line, as we always do, and write our assumptions at the top of the scope line. We have if r then s as our first assumption, and if r then q as our second assumption. And then we're going to write the conclusion we're trying to derive at the bottom, which is if r, then 
S and Q. Okay, so now that we've done this, um, we're going to ask ourselves, is there anything we can do with lines 1 and 2, our two assumptions, to derive this conclusion? And without conditional proof, it looks like the answer is going to be no, given what rules we have. So let's draw another scope line. And at the top of our scope line, we're going to write the antecedent of the conditional that we're trying to prove. And notice that another way to kind of tackle this problem is to ask ourselves, um, is our conclusion a conditional? And in fact, it is. We have if R, then S and Q. Um, so we can try to use conditional proof to derive this conditional. Of course, if our, if our conclusion wasn't a conditional, we couldn't look to conditional proof um, to, to bring about the conclusion. All right, so we're going to write our antecedent at the top of the conditional we're trying to prove and the consequent of the conditional we're trying to prove at the bottom. And you'd write A for CP. So now R is technically another one of our assumptions and we can use it along with lines one and lines two to derive the consequent of the conditional S and Q. And we do that by modus ponens. So we have S from 1, 3, MP, and Q, oops, this should be a 5, and Q from 2, 3, modus ponens. And so now we have S and Q on separate lines, and we can bring them together with 4, 5, and introduction. And now, according to the rules of conditional proof, we can close off this conditional proof or discharge it by writing lines 3 through 6 CP. So we assumed our antecedent on line 3 and we derived the consequent on line 6 and so we've reached the conclusion we wanted and we can now discharge and get a conditional. And that's that. This concludes part 1 of conditional proofs. Be sure to continue with part 2.